What is going down, everyone? Mojo Break the Hype, episode number 136, actually. Not 135, but it feels like 135. Who even knows what day it is anymore? It's, 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 it's a struggle out there trying to figure out what day it is. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about today. We're going to talk about Jordan episode 3 and 4, The Last Dance, some of the cards that have been selling from the show. Uh, we're also going to be talking about just crazy listings and how you can navigate through some of the, you know, the crazy prices that are out there this day, who to, who to trust and uh, what to look for. So uh, first off, this is going to be a solo show. Um, rest in peace to Dan. Uh, his character on the show is no longer a part of the podcast, guys. Uh, we've since then, uh, we've since moved him uh, out of here to the shipping department, which is on another island now. So I uh, just wanted to, uh, we got an email about this and uh, we've just had too many emails about Dan. So me and C-Rad just uh, made an executive decision and just got rid of him. So uh, I'm just going to read the email that we got from a, from a nice gentleman, you know, just giving some great feedback about the show. He said, I found your pod through the website where I break occasionally, been listening to the hype for six months and have some thoughts I'd like to share. They may fall on deaf ears, but seeing as your pod, and they didn't fall on deaf ears, I'll tell you that right now because we made the change. Um, but uh, seeing as your pod represents highly successful breaker site, I assume you're open to customer feedback. Dan is rough, and that's in capitals, to listen to. He continues to drag the show to a halt with inane arguments, forcing Doug to pick the show back up and keep it moving. That's right. I'm always picking the show back up. You know me. Um, not only are Dan's opinions often nonsensical, they are often factually incorrect. I can recount previous shows where Dan is making an argument and he spouts three to four incorrect statements in a row and supports some odd take. So, um, you know, he said, anyways, I think Dan even referred himself as a blowhard in previous episodes, and unfortunately, I concur. Anyways, I'd like to continue to listen to the pod, but after listening to Dan's absurd review of The Last Dance, I think I'm out. My suggestion would have Doug and C-Rad co-host. C-Rad always offers insightful, well-formed opinions and insights. C-Rad and Doug know their shit. Uh, And I didn't, you know, that was written. Co-starring a a breaker site does not make a good podcast host as they require two completely different skill sets. Thank you for your time. So, yep, got rid of Dan, guys. So you're just going to have to listen to me talk and uh, give my opinions. So it's going to be really weird to have opposite opinions on myself but uh, i'll try my best just kidding dan what's up (sighs) man um (laughs) aaron bro bitch oh oh oh, i'm sorry (laughs) hot mic there hot mic oh no 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 i knew it was on that was directed and i'd say it to your face i ain't got (laughs) i ain't i ain't scared Um, (laughs) scared let Obviously, you don't get it. You just straight up don't get it. It would not be an entertaining podcast or show, webisode, whatever the hell you want to call it, if all three of us just sat here and agreed with everything we said. Look at all the shows out there. You got to have somebody who's going to take the other direction. You got to have somebody who's going to, you know, speak for the minority. That's what I do. That's what you're here for. I'm out here. You're out there. You're I'm, out the holding the I'm flag. speaking for the people who don't have a voice. Yeah. You're taking that LeBron side. You know, somebody's got to. T- and plus, hey, you're not even faking that side. That's that's true. I'm not. To I, your soul. I, yeah. I mean, and, you know, it's funny. It's funny. It happened on that episode because I know that conversation, LeBron, Jordan conversation. Everybody feels very strong about it. And I'm tired of having the argument. I'm tired of saying that. I'm tired of saying I prefer LeBron James over Michael Jordan. I'm tired of doing it because I'm tired of all the backlash that I get. People look at me and they're like, you don't know what you're talking about. So that's why when I worded it that way, I actually came out and said, I prefer watching 
me personally prefer watching LeBron James over Michael Jordan. No, you're all wrong, dude. You got to worship Michael Jordan right now because it's the only thing on TV. So you need to kiss the feet of Michael Jordan. I'm telling you that right now. You're not. You're not doing. You're not doing good enough job kissing the feet of Michael Jordan. And I'll. I mean, <laughs> I don't care if Aaron listens. Dan, I Dan, you're, I, like, I, you're like Isaiah I, Thomas, and, right? And, now. and I don't. I give. I give no shits. Don't care. Don't don't care. It. This podcast does not pay my bills. It doesn't keep my lights on. Doesn't put food in my face. In your face? In my face. On your face? Does not, doesn't do See, it. See, I want those and emails. I would, and I would gladly, whatever money that that person is paying us to, you know, view or listen to our podcast, I'll give you 10 times the amount back. A refund? Full refund. Full refund on Full the podcast. Refund. Full refund. Um, it's, no, I, it's just, and I, I get it. I mean, yeah, you're, Doug, you're jealous. I, dude, you're, I want some hate mail, dude. I need to start. Jealous. I need to start saying something silly. No, I it, went on here and I called out breakers. Yeah, my, I, I'm on here calling out super break. My, I, you nobody think says anything. You like, think I'm funny? <laughs> do you I, think I? You think I'm funny? <laughs> I think. Do you're I? Funny. Do I make you laugh? <laughs> this shit. I take this shit seriously. Uh, it's not Dan Anderson. It's Derek Anderson right now. I take this shit seriously. Alter ego over there. But no, I, actually, I keep the emails coming. I mean, that's what we want. We want to have emails like this. Um, it was no, a great man, way to start I, off the show. I didn't have to search for content right now. So, you know, I, I appreciate those emails. I just want right, some hate yeah, mail of back. Course, of course you appreciate them. It, dude, it beats you down. It, it beat, it, <laughs> I mean, we're in, a pan, we're in a pandemic. And I'm trying, to, I'm trying to do my best over here. You are. You're entertaining him. You, you got this guy so mad he probably broke a plate I'm, or something, dude. He was I like, don't know no. how. I don't know how he has the – well, I do know how no. he has the time because everybody has a little too much time right now. But we're in a pandemic. I'm in the – I'm like in one of the – in the hearts of the pandemic here in, in Northern California. But you know you, and, you didn't worship Jordan, dude. You needed to worship Jordan. You got it all wrong. I just going forward, I just need to know that I can't have my own opinion. Yeah. I need it. I need to go back to doing what I was doing before for about 35 seconds. One show when I just agreed with what, everything you said, we should just do a spoof episode where you just like, you're just like puppies and kittens and, 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 and happy rainbows. And just, uh, just, just talk about how, uh, you know, you should just tell me how great I am. I'm on the off. edge over here, you man. Should, you should tell me how great I am and my opinions are. I'm you on know. the edge. And then you could just talk about kittens, rainbows, and puppies. I, I don't I, There's something about my voice because I could actually speak about kittens and puppies and rainbows and all that <laughs> shit. And people will still be like, I hate, I hate kittens. I hate puppies. <laughs> now that Dan likes them, I can't do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I used to like rainbows, but I now. Used, I used to like rainbows, but now I realize that. They're full of lies. <laughs> They're full of lies. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Max said uh, Dan is Fox News and Doug is The View. So I don't know which. Wh who would I be on The View though? I mean, that mean, that means I'm a I'm a female, right? I don't I don't know if that's. Uh, I'll take that one. But uh, uh, maybe well, I'll go for Whoopi Goldberg though. If you want to say I'm Whoopi Goldberg, I'll take that one. Oh. Um, but anyways, uh, th dude, I think you need to take a 96 hour Vegas trip, even though nothing's open. But let's just say you know you become like Dennis Rodman and and and, and the dance. You know I what I mean? I got it. I gotta say. Uh, one of the best scenes that I've seen so far out of the four episodes is Dennis Rodman coming out of the uh, parking lot, the facility. Well, oh, riding the motorcycle. Uh, riding the motorcycle. Has a can of Miller Lite. <laughs> gets on his motorcycle. Has a, has a police escort out of there. The person in front of him who's also on a motorcycle almost hits like a car. It, it was amazing. I mean, Rodman badass and I, I i don't wait never mind maybe i shouldn't say that i shouldn't make that opinion <laughs> i shouldn't have that opinion total rock star status carmen electra i mean he, he's just like hey i need some time to go clear my mind i mean i don't condone uh, 96 hour binge drinking but apparently he came back and he played just as hard as he did before i mean that's a that's a man of many 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 talents and i think uh i think rodman now has uh, gone through sobriety and he doesn't drink anymore but uh man that was epic just during the season just I gotta go. I gotta take forty-eight hours, which turned into ninety-six hours. I don't. Did he even get fined for that? Did the team fine him for that? I think they were just whatever. Um, you know, Pippen came back. He felt like he was a third wheel, and he, and, and he was dating Carmen Electra. I mean, you know, you know, how far was he? How I, they didn't say where he was, but did he ride wherever he was? Did he take the motorcycle all the way to Vegas? 
He had to have been like playing, must have been in Golden State or LA or something, right? I, I, it looked like when he was leaving, he was leaving Chicago. And he was going to take a motorcycle from Chicago to Vegas? Probably not. Probably, he, he probably, probably just private, went to the helicopter or something, right? right. Private jet. Private, private jet. But, man, I don't know. Un- yeah. Unsung hero. Yeah. I mean, and you didn't hear about that back in the day about him being the third wheel and stuff like that. Everybody knew he was a, you know, loose, loose cannon, but uh, didn't know that he was, you know, felt when Pippen came back that he, you know, his, his, his bond with Jordan wasn't there. And Jordan was the first guy to say, hey, give him some time off, guys. Who cares? It's, 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 it's the worm. It's Dennis. You just need some time off. It's perfectly fine. Do you think if uh, Cl- I, I don't think I don't think Jordan I think Jordan was like, he's going to do whatever he wants to do, regardless of what I say. How would that? And, be? Then, and then Jordan was like, he, it ain't going to be 48 hours, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it turned into 96. What would you think would happen if Clay Thompson told the Warriors uh, that he's, you know, he's, he needs 96 hours to go to Vegas? What do you think would happen in modern day basketball? There's probably a lot. That stuff probably does happen. It just we don't hear about it. What about what about I'm Johnny Manziel? He was he was going to Vegas and hanging out and getting his party on. But I don't think they were. I don't think anybody modernly has missed games for that. I think unless they're just like saying it's an illness or something in quotations. Right? I know. I know Manziel illness. definitely missed practice. Right. Manziel did. Manziel did. I mean, we can't. We shouldn't be comparing Dennis Rodman to Johnny Manziel. I guess. Yeah. Sorry. Dennis. No, but I will. Don't worry. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> now, I also heard a lot of people were saying that the uh, the Jazz were just as dirty as the Pistons were, and uh, the Pistons are getting the, the all the the the, the dirtiness. Street cred here, I don't known as the bad boys, but they were saying that you know Carl Malone and I remember a little bit Carl Malone, Greg, Greg Ostertag, even Stockton, just bullying down the Bulls, trying to use the same theory that the Pistons did to muscle them around. So I thought it was pretty interesting. What, what did you think about his comments about Isaiah Thomas? Did he, did he keep it real or did he need to just get over it? Well, weren't they were on the dream team together, right? No, he uh, he didn't let him play on. Oh, team. that's right. Yeah, that's he, right. He, he, he still hates him. That's right. That's right. It was uh, Jordan was like, it's either me or Isaiah Thomas. Yeah. Magic Johnson was trying to get Isaiah Thomas on the team. And he was like, nah, we're cool. Yeah. You know, I mean, the Pistons, they uh, that that was kind of their uh, their mantra right there. That's what they would do is they would just uh, physically beat you. And that would never fly in today. I mean, imagine imagine if there was a team that played like that in the NBA right now. Oh yeah, I mean, there's you saw some fouls in some of the uh, the highlights they were showing on the uh, on the Last Dance that would probably get you suspended for multiple games. Oh yeah, I mean, there was uh, you can't be you can't be throwing no punches. No, you can't just be pushing people to the ground. But uh, I didn't. I don't. I don't really see. I know they said the uh, the Utah Jazz very very similar style of play. I, I what they had Malone, they had Ostertag, they had Stockton and Hornacek. Hornacek. I who I mean you didn't have Mahorn and Lambeer. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, think, I, I, I think don't, it's, you, I, you I also don't have, recall, you have you also have different parts of the country. Detroit, I don't re- Detroit, knowing as a bad is a, is a bad boy area. Area would, would anybody view Utah at that time? I don't recall um, Carl Malone being a, a dirty player. A, I don't remember Stockton being a, a really dirt. I remember Stockton being a good defensive player. I don't think it was reported that way, but if you watch some videos, there was a video actually with Isaiah Thomas where he went, it was the beginning of the game. It might have been a regular season game, and Isaiah Thomas went up for a for a, a layup, and Carl Malone just pushed him to the ground. He had like 26 stitches after that in his head. Literally just flagrant foul on on Isaiah Thomas. So, I, But I could see the Jazz playing the Pistons that way. I can see that because that that's basically giving them a taste True. of their own medicine. Yep. But the Bulls were they didn't play that way. They I mean, you could say they were more of a finesse team. The triangle, baby. The, the triangle. Triangle. That's <laughs> what I try to run on pickup games. <laughs> so I like the, it's run the triangle, bro. I like how Jordan was like, Well, yeah, that that, that just takes the ball out of my hands. But they're like, Yeah, but you can't win every game by yourself. Banana like, oh, swirl. Banana swirl. <laughs> so this is actually astonishing. Back to the card market. So this is Scottie Pippen. And Scottie Pippen obviously hasn't played for a while. Uh, Scottie Pippen will no, no longer further his stats. Um, but this is pretty astounding if you want to look at these prices. So you've, you, this is a month apart. A month apart, you have a 1988 Fleer Scottie Pippen rookie PSA 10 that sold for $739 
on March 26th. You have one that sold on April 26th. The same exact card, PSA 10, twenty six hundred dollars. So, bro. so, so within a month, within a month, you had a card that almost sold for two thousand dollars more. It almost tripled its original selling price before the show. Like Scottie Pippen did not do anything other than get his face on a TV show. That's it. That's all. That's all that happened. I mean, I'm sure at the Scotty Pippen was at the VIP party in Atlantic City. I'm sure they weren't paying him that much to be there. You know what I mean? So like Scotty Pippen, it, this is insane to me. This is how society has become because we're getting so bored with things that we're, we're people are searching for these cards and they're willing to pay whatever price possible. Like 88 Fleer is during the junk wax era. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of opportunity after the show's over, after everybody goes back to work, that you're going to be able to buy this card probably closer to the $700 price. So why are people overpaying for these cards? This goes to the chat too. Do you guys have any ideas? Why are people paying? And we have some theories that we're going to share with you guys coming up, but it's just insane to me. It's Dude, insane I to don't, me. I honestly, I think 739 is too much. Well, I, I mean, I don't even want to get into the 2675. I mean, $2,700. Well, I'm going to look at the pop report right now. This is going to tell us. This is going to tell us a lot just to see how many of these I mean, PSA who, 10s uh, are. Who knows how many? I mean, I don't even know if people. There's. Who is. I want to see when people were going out and getting these graded. I mean. Well, it's a Scottie Pippen rookie card. I mean, he's a top 50 NBA player of all time by that top 50 list. So, I mean, he. he he's, he's royalty. He's won six champions. Yeah, but go go find. Go find anybody else who's not on the Bulls. Of that same era, that is a go find me a, a a John Stockton. Well, he didn't win six championships. Okay. Um, All right. So, you, well, to be fair, there's ten uh, the PSA tens. There's 217 of them currently. Um, I don't even. There's probably a, a lot of them not even great. Yeah, I was gonna say there's probably a ton, a ton in shoe boxes and people's attics. Yeah, 6,040 total graded of the uh, 1988 Fleer Scotty Pippins. Uh, 2,300s, 2,808s, and 217 PSA 10s. So, I mean, that does make a small pop report there, but just because of the show, we're going to pay another $2,000 for this card during a pandemic? I mean, it just... Stuff stuff on eBay is just literally blowing my mind. I mean, but there, I, there's nothing that can happen for that card to go up. Right. There's not there's nothing that's gonna happen unless Jordan comes out and says and they never he'd never say this. He's like Scotty Pippen's better better ball player than me. Right. It's not gonna happen. He's, was like, there, he's all without Scotty. He's like, I wouldn't I, I would have been a scrub. Well, was there any player that won and I, I don't this is a serious question. Was there any player that won six championships with those two? Because I know Rodman wasn't there the whole time. Um was it just Pippen and Jordan and obviously the coach? Bill Jackson was there. I, I don't think Steve Kerr played those the entire time, right? Kerr was there for a while. I think uh, you got like four of them. Paxson, maybe John, Paxson. John Paxson may have been there for. When was their first one? See, I think I think Paxson was there probably until like '94, so we probably missed out on the the later ones. I think it was what '91 when they beat the when they beat the Lakers. They're showing last yeah, night. Paxson got three. Kerr got three. Uh, Grant probably got three. Will Purdue got three. Will Purdue. Um, so where are those Will Purdue rookies at? <laughs> Robert Parrish got one with the Bulls. Chief. Yeah. Um, Steve Kerr got three with the Bulls. Ron Harper got three with the Bulls. Dennis Robin got three with the Bulls. Um, Scotty Pippen got all six. So yeah, I literally, literally think it's literally just Scotty and Jordan for those th- player wise. For, for all those championships. Uh, BJ Armstrong probably got two. Maybe. Yeah. So literally it was just those two guys. So with that, I don't know. So people are, this is what happens in this hobby though, is that Jordan prices are out of control. So what's the next best thing? Well, Scotty Pippen. You're, I mean, Dennis Rodman cards went up too. So, I mean, this show has made these cards go crazy and, and it might be the time if you're sitting on any of these cards to just just put it up and don't look back. 
I mean, especially if you're dealing with a Pippin and Rodman card that prior to the show sold for, you know, 700. Now it's worth three, four times as much during this time. Well, I think it's absolutely I insane. didn't didn't Kerr get didn't Kerr get one more with the Spurs? Uh, yes, I think he did. He get two with the two with them. Um, maybe he only has five. I, I, yeah, I he got two with the Spurs. He, he won in 99 and 2003. So he has five championships as a player and three as a coach. Three is they, a, don't, they don't they don't count the coach. Three as a coach. I mean, so he has five, though, as a player, right? Mm hmm. So Steve Kerr rookies, where are they at? Right. Steve Kerr. He's up there. He's uh, he's ranked 14th, tied for 14th. Steve Kerr actually has the same amount of championships as Tim Duncan, Kobe Bryant, George Mikan, Don Nelson, <laughs> Michael Cooper, Jim Pollard. I mean, some guys that are on the Celtics team, obviously, that uh, that won a lot of championships. So, yeah, Kobe, uh, Steve Kerr and Kobe Bryant, same amount of championships. And, and you can throw in the, the – the, you have a big fundamental in Tim Duncan as well. So, um, crazy. So, I also wanted to point out uh, some, some, some just ridiculous cards in my opinion. And I want to kind of navigate you guys through how to kind of deal with this. And I have some, subge some suggestions for eBay. So, I think there's some things that need to change. Um, this era, you know, we started getting rid of uh, a Beckett pricing. You know, nobody looks at a Beckett. Everybody looks at eBay. But I think you need to start questioning eBay final sales as well. And we got to stop using some of those as comps because I think it could be easily, easily manipulated. And I'll show you how. Um, first off, this Mike Trout card that I ripped on absolutely just tore it apart um, when it first came out. Um, they're selling for like $300 now. So um, people that bought these cards for, I think, $20 um, are now selling them for $300. Does that say SP to yeah. $2,911? Yep. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. Come on. It's Come on. To be fair, it's one of the shortest printed Project 2020s that came out. To be fair, there's 3,000 of them. <laughs> well, yeah. 3,000's not short printed. I mean, look at it. It's so weird. And I get the art. I get that's, you know, people like that kind of stuff, especially people who follow that artist. But $300 for uh, this Mike Trout. And I'm talking about the, uh, for you, you guys that are listening to the audio version of this podcast, I'm talking about the Ermsey, the Ermsey one. Uh, the Mike Trout number four, Ermsey. So recently, April 21st, this card got clicked. Buy it now, $300 for this card. So it, it literally insane. Uh, second year Luca right here coming up out of Hobby Hybrid. Hobby Hybrid, second year Luca Disco, numbered out of 25. No auto, no relic, not a rookie, 197. Uh, these are cards that we... Three or four years ago, we would be like, do we need to top load this? I mean, if it's number 25, we always have. We would top load as long as, we, we as, would. Long, as, long as it's numbered to 199 or less. We right, that's our it. rules. But it, it's caused us to, to think outside the box, no pun intended. I mean, that is insane to pay for a Luca card. I mean, his silvers, when he came out, were barely going. We were going for like 500 for a rookie card. So, like, just to me, I think what you have to keep in mind is that we need to get eBay. And I don't know how it'll happen. Maybe some of our voices, maybe uh, some big companies' voices, is we need to see if these listings get paid. That is the key. Because right now, but 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 the thing is, is that why why would any manufacturer care? I mean, definitely, definitely. I know, I know what you're saying, but you are fighting a battle that I I really is think it's going to fall on deaf ears. Especially the people who are manipulating the market. You're, you're the you're the devil. I mean, what? Because basically, what's happening right now is it is this single handedly is why all the products are are going up so much. Correct. So you're not going to have the online retailers. This is directly benefiting them. Right. Your distributors directly benefiting them. Mm -hmm. Manufacturers, you know, they're going to make the product regardless, but. What it is allowing them to do is to start make making variations of the same product. That's why you're seeing the select hybrids and the prism fast breaks and you know all all this different variations of a release where there would only be one. Now there's three or four. Correct. And that's and that's and it's not in my best interest, your best interest to even be talking about this because we sell sealed wax. But I just, you know, at the end of the day, I am a, uh, a hobbyist. I am a collector. And, you know, this stuff has got me questioning. And I know there's a lot of people at home, which allows this, this effery to go around. So let's just put it in perspective. This may be a bad example because there's only 25 of them. But let's just say, you know, you 
were able to buy, let's just say we're going to use this Juan Soto as an example. And I actually was going to block off his name. So I, I, I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't block off his name there, but he didn't do anything wrong. I'm just using it as an example that like, let's just say that the, the, the Juan Soto uh, error. That's, that's debatable. Uh, the Juan <laughs> Soto error variation card. Let's just say that those were going for $30 at one point. Okay. Um, you could have, you could be one guy. You could buy 50 of them, 60 of them, 70 of them, 80 of them, 90 of them. Let's just say, let's just say you bought 100 of them. You could then send that to Probstein, send 20 of them to Probstein, have um, somebody bid, bid them up, and then they buy it or you buy it. You give them the money. Now the market is now set at $80. So now this person can go into Facebook chats to Braz rooms or whatever they're doing and now say that this card is now 80 when they only invested 30 or 40 and 500 of them. So now they just took their money and they doubled it because we're using eBay as a barometer on what a card should sell for. So and right now I think it's just out of hand. You're seeing you're seeing Griffey's. Um, we'll go back to the. Uh, uh, I didn't put the Griffey on there. You're seeing Griffey uh, PSA 10 rookie cards sell for $1,600. They were $500 two months ago. So we all know there's like millions of those out there. So it's very easy for a couple people to manipulate the market. Everybody's at home right now. And uh, just everybody's getting their nostalgia on. And everybody's trying to collect the best player. Jordan may be out of reach. So who's next? I'm going to collect Griffey. Who's next? I'm going to try to collect Trout. You know, or... For football, uh, you know, I can't buy Patrick Mahomes, but maybe I'll buy a legend. Maybe I'll buy Emmett Smith. Maybe I'll buy, uh, you know, maybe I'll buy Troy Aikman. These cards could easily be manipulated during this time. So all I say is that if you're dealing with a card that's not numbered, like something like this, something like the, the Emmett Smith, something like a Kobe, just wait. Just wait it out. You don't – it's not a one-on-one. It's not going to go away. I would be very careful with some of these comps. I'd be very careful of a card that went from – $500 to $1,500 in a month, that's not sustainable. And that's why I suggest that eBay should, and regardless if they will or not, one thing that will cure all this is if they put the auction got paid. Because it's very easy for somebody to create so-called burner accounts, use their wife's account, bid up a card, even if there's only 10 of them. Let's just say there's 10 of them and, it's, and they bid it up to $1,500. Now they can sell theirs for 14 Seems like a deal. They just basically manipulated that one card just to make an extra couple hundred dollars. I'm not saying that's going on, but I could see how easy it is. It's something that's very easy to, I mean, for a company the size of eBay to automate a listing once it's paid to basically put like a check mark by it or something like that when you're when you're browsing through it. Right. Wouldn't, I mean, you could even go a step further and say this item was paid and shipped so if you're going back and you're like hey like i'm gonna buy i'm gonna look i'm gonna see what else this guy has because obviously he sold this high dollar card and he shipped it up and i could see it i don't have to go through his feedback and try to because some people leave feedback some people don't right um but if you had a little like a little check mark on a completed listing that said paid for and shipped I, it's something that can be implemented in an update through ebay's website it, it, it could be very i mean ebay and paypal are already attached so yeah you paid, know, they wouldn't even they would just have to make some kind of automated software that just puts it like you said like a check but but yeah and then paid shipped and returned and then basically if it has like a return next to it then you can look at it and go well i wonder why it was returned right we i mean we ebay can definitely they can definitely figure that out um but yeah i mean some of the prices on these cards Six hundred dollars for card chasings in the chat saying six hundred dollars for a Luca is properly valued. I think for which for for for, 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 for the second year. For which one though? The blue one that you showed. Well, that's out of hobby hybrid. That's out of hobby hybrid. But well, it went for one ninety five, not six hundred. But he's like, when a box of hybrid goes for six six hundred dollars, that Luca is properly valued. Uh, I look at it and go. And regardless of how good Luke is going to be in five, six, seven, ten years, who's going to be going back looking for second year cards? Who's going to go back looking for these? There's a pl there's plenty of his rookie cards out there. Right. There's a lot of releases, and you can look through Prism, and you can look through Select, and you can look through Optic, and you can look through Hoops, you can find it in in Donruss. I mean, there is a lot of base heavy products where. There is tons of rookies. 
Yeah. Who, who's going to go back and be like, man, I really need to get a second or a third year card because that's where the value is at. No, that that's that's not going to happen. And I understand. I kind of understand the LeBron factor, like where people are buying silver LeBrons and, and base cards of LeBron for a lot of money. I kind of understand that. Um, but Luca hasn't proven himself. Luca, Luca hasn't been to a championship. I, I'm pretty sure you can get some form of Luca rookie, whether it be from Mosaic or Ascent or something that you can get for cheaper than a, a, a Prism Hybrid. But you're absolutely correct. If somebody spends six hundred dollars on a box, I do agree that maybe some of the cards should be worth more than a box that's two hundred dollars. I understand that theory. But I, yeah, I mean, I also look at it and go, then if we're valuing Luca that high, then there's a lot of guys in the league who are absolutely undervalued. I mean, look at look at Donovan Mitchell. I bet I bet you can get Donovan Mitchell's second year cards, no problem. I you, bet they're I bet they're not two hundred dollars. Well, right. There's so many guys that they're, don't sell that you were also successful. Look at, you also look at a guy like Bradley Beal. You can probably go through and buy Bradley Beal second year cards for a couple bucks. I mean, look look at this. This is just a LeBron market. I mean, you got a you got a hollow silver insert from a retail optic, 1920, dollars. I mean, you've got uh, mosaic oranges. You've got a mosaic green. I don't even know if those are numbered because we haven't received our mosaic yet. But, you know, you're seeing this this craziness with the LeBron market on the base. Well, that's LeBron. LeBron's been to how many finals now? Eight, nine finals? I mean, I know it's hard for you to talk about LeBron anymore, but, you know, he's been to a lot of finals. And, and this is don't some be, of his don't first. Be fluff, don't be fluffing up LeBron, man. You'll get an email. <laughs> but he's – and this is some of his first full Jersey Laker cards, right? So, I mean, maybe there's a reason why they're selling for so much because it's, you know, some of his first Laker products. But for Luka, second year – not even a prism card, but that and that's what I'm saying, Max. Like second year Luca, third year Luca, fourth year. Luka, what's the difference? It's not a rookie. It wh why 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 pay a premium for a second year card? So, but LeBron, uh, LeBron, like this one, ninety five for Mosaic. I mean, what's your what do you? So is it, it that's okay? I mean, this is what thirteenth, fourteenth year LeBron. No, that's not okay. I, I'm not. I'm not saying I, the LeBron thing blows my mind too. I don't understand it. What what are we what are we doing here? I don't know what we're doing. I mean, what are we doing? What's going on? What's the thought process here? It's crazy. It's uh, I I just I don't know if it's a matter of everybody having enough like too much time and and you know having a lot more time to focus on their collection and it's become to a point where it's un unfocused. You know, like we're literally just buying whatever we can instead of being it, focused. Uh, dude, LeBron cards. Are going to be valued more than the American dollar soon. <laughs> well, yeah. We're, I mean, we're just going to be going around trying to get a mortgage and just coming out with LeBron cards and being like, "This is what I got. Like, this is my down payment. Here you go." I mean, like this one here that I, I thought I put a picture of, um, but I did not. Um, this blew absolutely blew my mind. So it's it's flawless and it's a DK Metcalf. DK Metcalf's a receiver for the Seahawks, if you didn't know. And uh, it's a one of one sapphire, and it's sold for thirty four hundred dollars. I mean, but but did it? Because it, th that listing d means nothing. It means nothing anymore. It means nothing unless you know that it's been paid for. It means nothing. And with that one, it's a one of one. You can't really compare it to anything else. Right. Actually, there probably is different variations in flawless that are one of ones of DK Medcalf. Well, let's just like Calvin Johnson. Rookie auto. Let's just, you know. That's old school, man. We're, we got to live in the now. Look at that. 153. 153. So you're telling me. <laughs> I mean, let's see if I can find what's the highest. Dual auto with Larry Fitzgerald on card out of Exquisite. And Larry, and, and Larry Fitzgerald does not sign. $405. So why would we pay $3,400 for a DK Metcalf? I, I have no idea. And and I'm not saying that's that a, I'm, yeah, I'm that's not, a, I'm not that's a, and then uh, below it, buy it now, four hundred dollars, pristine ten. Pristine ten. Rookie. Chrome. Yep. Rookie auto number to fifty, four hundred dollars. Why why DK Medcalf thirty one hundred dollars? Well what's going on? I don't I, know. I, 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 I'm I am just almost convinced right now that everybody is shilling their shilling their auction. Man, it could be. I mean, I don't I don't know. That's why I say like we used to say don't use Beckett, and I'm not. this isn't an endorsement for Beckett by any stretch of the imagination. 
I just think podcast that, is brought to you by Becky. <laughs> I just think you need to do a little bit more research than and then just throwing down bids on a car that you have no idea of the history or the recent uptick in that particular card. And uh, unless it's a, like a crazy one of one of a Hall of Famer that you need now, I think I'm just telling you, if you buy in singles, you can wait. It's an absolutely a seller's market, and I'm not against capitalism. I'm not against making money. And if a guy has, you know, thirty four hundred dollars to buy DK Metcalf, more power to him. But I'm just speaking here to the average collector that don't fall in. And I know the show is called a hype, but don't fall into the hype on some of these cards because it could be easily manipulated. I, right now. I could almost guarantee you that DK Metcalf is not paid for. Right. I could almost I could almost guarantee that. Could be. Could be. Well, that's all the time we got today. We got uh, Gypsy Queen coming up, guys. Thanks for listening to the podcast. We appreciate it. Make sure you follow us at MojoBreak underscore com on Twitter and Instagram. We also have a Facebook page as well. Uh, we're going to be doing breaks uh, all week. We've got brand new credentials hockey coming out on Wednesday. We're getting in more definitive baseball. We'll be doing that. Um, we're live every day. We're going to be doing personals tomorrow. So lots of stuff on our website. All you got to do is go on the website. Go to the right side of the side if you're on PC. That's our schedule. Everything's guaranteed to break, and uh, they've been filling at a rapid pace. So I would definitely suggest getting in early, finding something you like. We have all different types of price points, whether it be uh, single box breaks up to 35 box breaks. So check it out. Check out MojoBreak.com for your breaks, and uh, we'll be live here shortly with uh, Gypsy Queen. All right, guys. Peace.